B-17 bomber screams toward Earth with nine men trapped on board. A P-51 Mustang and its beautiful pilot disappear over the Pacific forever. And a T-33 jet fighter plummets into a saga of destruction and disgrace. Historic aircraft transformed into twisted metal and shattered lives. I don't see plane wrecks, I see stories. When all these stories are put together, I see history. Aviation archaeology explores what went wrong. See the handhold here? Right there on the inside of the structure. And men were holding on for dear life. These secrets are uncovered in broken wings. of more than 10,000 aircraft are scattered across America. Like ruins from past eras, their twisted remains lay where they fell from the sky. Today, these wrecks are the hunting grounds for a new breed of scientists and adventurers called aviation archaeologists. You can see a landing gear leg here. There are areas of wing structure and control surfaces. This Pat Maka is one of the world's most respected experts at finding long-lost aircraft and piecing together why they fell from the sky. Every wreck tells a story to me, and the human drama makes it especially fascinating. That really drives me to study and to learn as much as I can. Uncovering these stories requires science, intuition, and old-fashioned detective work. I use newspaper articles, government files, but whenever possible, we try to locate survivors to help us better understand what we'll find at the crash sites. California contains one of the greatest concentrations of aircraft wrecks in the country. This legacy derives from constant civilian air traffic, test flight programs, past military operations, and the Sierra Nevada mountains. We sometimes think of these mountains as literally harvesting planes out of the sky. It's not surprising. Uh, these mountains rise nearly three miles above the level of the sea. They stick up into the sky, they make difficult weather, they mask themselves in clouds, they surprise pilots. We average something approaching a plane crash a year, even today with modern instrumentation. For Pat Maka, these rugged mountains that once lured prospectors now hold a very different treasure. Well, we're heading east in the high Sierra, east of Sacramento. And we're going to be looking for a Boeing B-17C, which is a very rare version of the B-17 Flying Fortress. Before heading into the Sierra Nevada mountains, Maka does his homework. Before visiting the B-17C in the El Dorado National Forest, I looked at newspaper articles, got the official Air Force crash report, talked to locals who were familiar with that area, and then got a blow-by-blow -blow description from crash survivor Fred Pecuri. My job in the Army was essentially that of a mechanic in Salt Lake City. The reason uh, for the flight or the mission was that particular aircraft had a faulty engine. If we were to fly to McClellan Field near Sacramento to have the depot people uh, change the engine for us. The number three engine, according to the U.S. Army paperwork, plays a critical role in driving the instrumentation aboard the B-17C. Fred has doubts about the mission before they even leave the runway. Why they chose the depot, I don't know. We could have done the same thing back in Salt Lake. However, the powers decided to have us fly it to uh, McClellan Field. So. Off we left for Sacramento. B-17-047, ready for takeoff. Welcome to Kevin 1047 clear from Salt Lake. Over. On November 2nd, 1941, the B-17C is the U.S. Army's largest and most advanced heavy bomber. Picuri has no idea that he is about to become a first-hand witness to design faults that will endanger his life. It's also a, uh, Over 60 years later, Maka investigates what remains. Uh, 
we want to examine this wreck and examine it carefully and we want to see that center section of the of the wing because again when there's only one in existence in the world and that's uh, back at the Smithsonian and it's in a storage area now that's the swoosh mm -hmm. it survived World War II only because it was converted from a bomber to a transport mm -hmm. oh. but in because of the remote location and difficult terrain Maka enlists the help of search and rescue volunteers Julie and Monty Hendricks they will guide him through the El Dorado National Forest in the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Okay, wait a sec. Are we getting any shines through there, Monty? Right down past the rock. Okay. Bleached logs sometimes can fool you. Hiking for hours in the wilderness, they close in on the area where Maka expects the wreckage to be. He looks for glints of sunlight on the aluminum. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We got some metal over here. Just beyond that log. Would you look at this? Now this is what aircraft archaeology is all about. You know, when we touch this wreck, we're touching the past. And this is where time stopped for this airplane on November 2nd, 1941. Back in 1941, a fierce snowstorm forces the B-17 to set down at Reno, Nevada. We spent the night there, and uh, Captain Walker, the pilot, decided that the weather had improved enough to make the flight into uh, McClellan Airport. In 1941, uh, the state of the art of weather predicting was, was not anywhere near as it is today. There was no satellite technology. They didn't have all of the instrumentation available. And from Reno, the weather looked passable across the high Sierra, and he made a decision to fly. There is nothing to warn the crew they are heading into the heart of a powerful blizzard. 